Hello everyone. Today we have with us Dr. H K Chopra, a cardiologist of international repute, president of CSI 2015, and chairman World Wellness Foundation, with more than 35 years of clinical experience. He has served as the editor in chief of CSI Cardiology Update 2014, STEMI Update released recently. which is one of the most powerful book on STEMI in the world his pioneering contributions in the field of thrombolysis doppler echocardiography and clinical and preventive cardiology is known to everyone in the world in the continuation of the STEMI management we were discussing with him and would like to hear the other opinions he have on the subject so then how important do you consider is the time window in the management of STEMI It's very important, Arshita. I think uh, the main crux of the whole treatment is time window. Time is critical determinant for STEMI care. It's a real challenge for Indians as well as for the real world. It is the first three hours which are very crucial. So we always call it time is muscle, and time is myocardium. We have to intervene in these three hours. If you see the golden hour for TLT, TLT means thrombolytic therapy. the golden hour for thrombolytic therapy is 60 minutes and the golden hour for pci or to call as percutaneous intervention is 90 minutes so if you are not aware of the time period door to balloon time and door to needle time door to balloon time should not exceed beyond 90 minutes in pci and door to needle time should not exceed beyond 60 minutes so far as the door to needle time is concerned in tlt total time duration we are given is 3 hours so a person from the time of chest pain to the full intervention should not exceed 3 hours you can ask me why sir why 3 hours the answer is when the coronary arteries are blocked the wave front of necrosis starts from the subendocardium within 30 minutes it goes to the mid myocardium in 2 to 3 hours it goes to the epicardium and become transmural after 3 hours when it become transmural means the damage is already gone up from the endocardium to the epicardium and become a transmural early we intervene the more we can salvage the geopardized myocardium that's why you say time window is very crucial and the critical determinant of progress or hazard of our intervention which we do subsequently speaking about the time window what are the different methods for treatment and management of stemi patients and are there different regimens for different types of stemi uh, so very important point harshita i think uh, if i give you the overall scenario since we did a lot of work on the clot buster what we call a thrombolytic therapy in 1983 for the first time we were the first in india our group who brought the concept of streptokinase or thrombolytic therapy in india and we showed and published our data somewhere in 1983 that early mortality and morbidity can be reduced significantly if patient are intervened with a thrombolytic therapy subsequently we have also shown in our follow up data which was published in 1919 in indian heart journal that the late morbidity and mortality can be significantly reduced and all these patients were followed from 6 months to 6 years i think it was a very enormous information subsequently if you see all the data from 1999 to almost 2014 you take all sn1 sn2 sn3 sn4 studies or timi trial or a grisha study or you take uh, any study with recent thrombolytic therapy like tenecteplase or retiplase there is a huge data to support that thrombolysis has a huge role you'll be very happy to know that india is very proud that we have a indian registry of tnk in almost 15000 patients in many centers of india and it was published in the indian heart journal 
showing that the early reperfusion, early treatment of thrombolysis with TNK may salvage the geoparalyzed myocardium in almost 96.5%. So huge data. The power of thrombolysis is huge. The same thing has been shown in Italian data, Italian registry, with 27,000 patients that the success rate of pre-hospital thrombolysis is superior as compared to PCI. And then comes the French FAST data, which is also shown very clearly in more than 1500 patients that the pre-hospital thrombolysis is most powerful. The Keptim trial has also shown that it's one month or one year or the five-year mortality is significantly reduced. But our own Indian data has shown in the Indian data registry that usually the STEMI mortality is up to a tune of 9%. If you give TNK therapy in time, then the mortality can be reduced to 1.1%. This has got a huge statistical significance. I, know the, I don't say PCI is not the answer. PCI is a very important method of a reperfusion. But the message should go. It is the availability of the method. We should not bother about the therapy. Both the therapies have got the level of evidence as A1, whether it is a thrombolytic therapy or it is PCI. It is the time window which is very important. And I think whatever reperfusion therapy you decide, we should make sure which is first possible. If first is TLT, we should give TLT. Untimely PCI is worse than a timely TLT. Similarly, timely PCI is better than untimely TLT. The message is very clear. In Indian context, if you see the data which was published recently in Hyderabad, just a few months, one month ago, they have shown that only 15 to 17 percent of patients of STEMI could get primary PCI. Primary PCI means the first mode of treatment was PCI. But where were those 85% of patients who were deprived of treatment? There is no data available. In one study they have shown that 60% of patients may be given thrombolysis. But I think we have a huge patient population who can be given pre-hospital thrombolysis. So the message is very clear by stream trial recently published that the first line of treatment at the contact a patient with a heart attack, we should give a pre-hospital thrombolysis and followed by 3 hours to 24 hours. All these patients should be referred to a PCI capable hospital where patient can be subjected to a PCI, an angioplasty or thrombolysis or angioplasty or a, a stenting and we must make sure that this should be very effective protocol in the emergency depending on the availability of the PCI facility and should decide which reperfusion therapy should be given which is available on the time priority considering the time window into our account. In Indian context where there is so much of traffic, so much of rush, the prime treatment at home, in the clinic, in the office, at the roadside is TLT. Patients should be given TNK first, instantaneously and patients should be referred immediately to the PCI capable hospital for an early intervention in the form of coronary angiography, angioplasty and stenting within 3 to 24 hours is the recommended protocol globally accepted. What are the different complications following STEMI and how we can manage them? I think uh, with the advent of PCI and advent of TLT, we don't see many complications, but to enumerate, there are many complications of STEMI if not treated properly with TLT or with PCI. They may get a cardiogenic shock, the heart function will become very poor, ejection fraction may fall down, they can have a peptidal muscle dysfunction, they may get a severe mitral regurgitation, they may get atrial fibrillation, ventricular tachycardia, sudden cardiac death, cardiac rupture, even the posterior wall can rupture. They can have all kind of complications which are possible if they are not treated effectively. If we treat them effectively, we can salvage the geopardized myocardium to a very large extent. What is the STEMI protocol for ER in any hospital? 
Yeah, it's a very good point, Harshita. I think uh, a time has come. The government of India should create a kind of regulation that all the hospitals in India will have an emergency protocol for taking care of STEMI patient if you really want to reduce the morbidity and mortality inflicted by STEMI. We have to make sure that there should be a proper training and education for STEMI care. Everybody should know who is STEMI. And number two, how they should intervene by thrombolytic therapy and who should go for PCI. Number two, we should have PCI capable hospitals. And they can be divided into two categories. A PCI capable hospital working around the clock 24 hours where a PCI interventional cardiologist is available round the clock. Category B, we should have a hospital who should be labeled as B category where the PCI capable person is available only in the office hours from 9 to 6. The remaining hospitals, we should make them as category C where only TLT is possible in less than 30 minutes or less than 60 minutes and they refer the patient to the hospital A or hospital B depending on the availability. So I think it's very important that a time has come we have to create new protocol protocols. Protocolization is the need of the R. Training and education is the need of the R because in the periphery, the existence of big hospitals is not there. There are no PCI. But of course, we can train everybody so far as the thrombolytic therapy is concerned. And TNK or Retiplace are very, very important uh, method of uh, treatment of uh, STEMI in the early stages. So you spoke about several factors. So can any lifestyle optimization may decrease the chance of managing or uh, experiencing STEMI? Ashita, I think it's a very important point. Whenever we treat STEMI, it does not mean we are eradicating the disease. The disease process is still there. So lifestyle optimization is the need of the R before STEMI, during STEMI, and even after STEMI. When I say lifestyle optimization, we have to be very meticulous how we lead a life. As I mentioned to you, everybody should exercise every day for 30 minutes. That will keep the STEMI away, at least till the age of 80. After 80, we all have to go. There is no doubt about it. But up to 80, we can easily live peacefully and comfortably. When I say exercise, the message should be clear. Walking, walking, jogging, cycling, or treadmilling are the good exercises, preferably in the natural environment. But heart unfriendly exercises should not be done, as I mentioned to you, weightlifting and push-ups, not good. Number two, make sure that you don't have a central obesity. Central obesity is the worst obesity. We should cut down our weight and BMI should be less than 25 at any cost, whether male or female at any age. Number three, no smoking, no tobacco in any form. Number four, blood pressure should be 120 by 80 at any point of time with medication, without medication, with lifestyle optimization, by consumption of salt less than four grams, so 4.5 grams in India. And then cut down the weight Control of diabetes is very, very important and one should learn how to cope with the stress so that stress does not affect us. One should do yoga. 21st of June is a very powerful projection of India and the whole globe on yoga. Our Prime Minister is promoting this. I think it's a very important tool. All the eight limbs of yoga should be known. Yama, Nema, Asana, Pranayam, Pratihara, Dharna, Dhyana and Samadhi. I hope I've confused you to go one by one. When I say yama means do's and don'ts. You should know what you should do and what you should not do. Nema means self-discipline. We have to be very disciplined. And then asana. Asana is the various postures. Pranayama is the breathing exercise. And then uh, pratihara, contemplation. Then dharna is concentration. And then samadhi is transcendence and meditation. If you follow all the eight limbs of yoga and we know what to eat, when to eat, where to eat, how much to eat is very important. We should eat more of fruits, vegetables, nuts and not fried food or pakoras or samosas or halwa or betai. Very, very bad for our health. One should not eat junk food. 
and fast food. Fast food is the worst food so far as we are concerned. So brunching, munching and lunching outside should not be promoted. So I think it's very, very important to understand the concept that we must have a perfect mindset if you want to have a perfect health of the heart over a long term period. So can drugs like aspirin, statins, ARBs and beta blockers, can they help in decreasing the chances of STEMI? Yeah, I think it's a very important point if you see the whole world data or the global data where uh, uh, Canadian scientist Yusuf Salim once upon a time mentioned after the age of 55, we all have risk factors, occult or overt. Whether they have dyslipidemia or a high sugar or a hypertension or a coronary artery disease, everybody, if he has a risk factor, should be given all the four drugs which you just mentioned. Beta blockers or statins or ARBS or, ARBS or aspirin. They are very, very powerful tool. If they are given the form of a one magic bullet, or a heart protection pill, I think this may salvage a lot of people to get a heart attack prematurely. We can postpone the disease, we cannot er eradicate the disease, but if they don't get a heart attack till the age of 80, that's what our goal is. So these four medicines are very, very useful and very powerful in protecting the heart. So in this digital age, is there any smart heart app that could benefit in uh, good point, Arshad. I think you have touched the very last point, which is a very emotional point and very important point. I feel Docplexes or any such organization to take a lead. We need to create a lot of smart heart apps. When I say smart heart app, if I am a patient and if I get chest pain, I do not know whether I have a heart attack or not. I should have an app on a mobile. I can press the button and I can see, oh, it's a classical history of chest pain in the center with radiation to both the arms, sweating, choking, suffocation, it may be a heart attack. There should be a second button. When I press, I straight away press the button, I get the number of various ambulances in the vicinity wherever I am, and ambulance reach in five minutes to me, and they take my ECG. And my ECG is transferred by WhatsApp or by telemethods to my respective doctor or in the vicinity whosoever is a cardiologist who can see my ECG on the WhatsApp and you can say, oh, he or she had a heart attack. Please give him a clot buster. So ambulance should be equipped with a clot buster. I remember when I was working in USA, I used to go by aircraft, by helicopter, and I used to give the thumbaritic therapy right on the roadside to the patient to help. See the awareness. I'm talking of 20 years ago. There was so much awareness of thumbaritic therapy in USA. A time has come. The same thing we will do in India. Digital method is the only way of reaching the masses. I think creating a smart heart app is a brilliant idea and its application is enormous, very useful, and I'm sure it will totally change the scene of STEMI in India in the years to come. So we would really like to know that a medical community of 1,35,000 doctors, doc can be of any benefit to the Indian healthcare? I think uh, it's a very, very important uh, project with Docplex has taken. I think you should go to the doctors. You should also go to the masses. Medical education should not be confined only to the doctors. When I say doctors, there are specialists, there are physicians, there are GPs. Everybody should be addressed. Same way, an awareness campaign should also start in the public. When you increase awareness, and if they work together, the doctors and the patients, we can salvage a lot of uh, myocardium and STEMI can be reduced to very great excess. I must compliment and congratulate Doc Plexus for taking this wonderful initiative. In the years to come, I'm sure the awareness in Indians will go to the same extent as it is happening in the Europe or in the United States. Great, our Docplexus members are really looking forward to hear your opinions and learn from it. We are really glad to have this interaction with you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you very much, Sashita, for giving me this opportunity to work on your platform, Docplexus. Thank you. These interviews and events are featured by Docplexus exclusively for the doctors of Docplexus community. To receive updates regarding such upcoming events, please subscribe and like our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, and follow us on Twitter. Happy Doc Pixing!